Hello everyone. Today I'm working on a 2009 uh, Hyundai Santa Fe and I've got that infamous uh, code for the airbag and I just want to show you guys how to uh, repair it. Okay, I've opened the hood and the very first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the negative battery terminal. All I'm going to do is remove the negative battery terminal, just loosen it, give it a good twist, and it should pop out fairly easily. I'm going to put it down, tuck it inside so this way there's no chance it's going to come back up and reconnect to the negative battery terminal because when I remove the airbag there's, there, is, there is always a chance that the airbag could deploy. So this is a safety me measure and at the same time it gives you an idea to look at the battery and see how clean the posts are. You can see my post is... Uh, relatively dirty a little bit and I'll be cleaning that up when I put it back on. Okay now that I've re, uh, removed the uh, battery terminal it's now safe to remove the airbag. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start removing some screws. Uh, what you need is a Torx bit. I have a uh, T30 Torx bit and you can see it's one of those safety bits that has a hole on the end of it and that's what I'm going to use to remove it. So I'm going to try and do this with uh, one hand. I'm going to put it in here. Oh, my hand's in the way, one sec. Okay. Just going to turn the... Uh, you can see in here, there's a screw. I'm not sure if you can see it. But it's, uh, it's right here in this hole here. Right, right there. And that's a T30 Torx bit that you need to use. So I'm going to remove it. Okay, I've just removed the uh, two screws. One is uh, right in this hole here. It's uh, the, actually they're cap screws, so they just stay in place and just keep returning them until the, uh, the uh, airbag is loosened. It's tough to see this one because the camera, but it's in that hole there. So I'm just going to pull the airbag off now. So this is what it looks like. Okay. So basically this, there's a clock spring in here that allows communication because the wheel turns. You need to be able to communicate all the information to the airbag. So this way, when the sensor goes off, like on, on the bumper, when you hit something, then the airbag, um, the SRS module will sense the impact of the vehicle, and then it'll uh, deploy the airbag. There's additional wires in here as well that are for the uh, all these controls on the steering wheel and on this side as well, these controls here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disconnect um, the airbag here and here, and I'll be doing a resistance check on the airbag to see if it's within tolerance. If it's not, then I'll be disconnecting this, this, this clip here, this ground, and possibly this bracket down here, um, and remove the airbag completely, and I'll be disconnecting these connectors as well. And once that happens, um, then I'm going to uh, simply take this big large nut off, pull the steering wheel off, and you'll see the clock spring in behind it. Okay, I'm going to shut off the camera now and do this, since I can't do it uh, with one hand. Okay, I've removed the uh, airbag, and I've placed it in the center console upside down. Uh, you can see what it looks like here. I've removed uh, these wires here. I've removed the ground. I haven't removed any of this yet. I just wanted to get the airbag out. And now I'm going to do a check on the airbag. So basically, if you look very carefully, there are two pins. There's one, two and then one and two. These are separate circuits. So I wanted to check to see if the continuity um, between the two pins is still good. If you get an OL, that means that the circuit is bad. If you've got a good circuit, it should be virtually a short. So what I'm doing here is I've got a multimeter, just a cheap one, right? I've got it set to ohms, right? And all ohms is, is basically you're selecting that in order to check, check to see if there is um, continuity, which basically means that um, you have a short between one pin and the other, 
right? So you put it on ohms and all that ohms does is there's a little tiny battery inside here and it'll send a signal out one of these wires, oops, out of one of these wires. And then if the circuit is good at the other end, it will completely close it. So I'll simulate that right now. I will take my two probes and I will touch them together and it should say 0, 0.0. So here you can see I've touched the two probes together right and it should be at roughly about zero if you see anything other than that it's because it's not a perfect connection okay there we go i got it connected so there you go yes see i've connected the two and now we got 0, 0.0 so that indicates that the cabling and all the circuit in the multimeter is good now i'm going to do the same thing here i'm going to try and do this with one hand i'm going to place this here and this here you can see it very right there so I've got the probe on one on each one and you can see I have zero on my uh, multimeter okay so that's a good circuit and just so you know I've done the other side already and it's zero so I now know that the information coming from here to the airbags from here I should say coming to the airbags from the SRS system that's inside the engine um, it now I know now that if the signal comes that there's an impact, the airbags will deploy um, now. So what I have to do is make sure that the signal now is coming through the steering wheel, through the clock spring, um, and activates the uh, airbags. So what I'm going to do is disconnect all this. I'm going to pull the steering wheel right out, and uh, I will uh, start the filming again once I get that done. Okay, now I'm going to, uh, now that i got better lighting, and you may be able to hear me better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect. I'm just going to pull these out. This one here, I'm just going to separate this plastic clip and uh, and pull this out. And then I'm going to pull these out like that. See, that's one out. And the second one, um, I'm not sure it'll come out. So this basically will slide through this hole when the steering wheel comes out. I'll just pull this through. So this is the only part that stays. Okay, now I'm going to reduce, remove this bolt here with an impact and then I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, I've got my impact ready. Um, you can see here I've got a, uh, it's tough to see, but it's a 22 millimeter. Okay, I'm gonna just use it to remove this. Okay, the bolt is off, you can see. I'm gonna pull it off. And there's a tiny washer in behind, and I'll be pulling that off. This is actually a lock washer, and a lock washer is basically designed to stop the uh, bolt from backing off on its own. So I'm going to pull that off, and then I'm going to start tugging on the steering wheel, and I'll start the camera again after that. So you can see that I've uh, removed the, uh, the nut from here, and the lock washer has been removed. Now I've already loosened this, so it's a little bit more difficult, but... I'll just you, so you get the idea. You pull the steering wheel off, and then you route the cable that goes to the airbag. You route it through the hole here. You route it through the hole, and that's your clock spring right there. Okay, so I'm going to put the steering wheel away, and then I'm going to uh, disconnect the cover all the way around the clock spring. There's several screws, and uh, I'll get back to you on that. Okay, I've removed uh, two screws, this one here, this one here, and I have one screw in here, and there's another one in here. So there's four, and then there's a fifth one right up inside here, right there. You can see that, like that. So once I get all those off, and they are off right now, I should be able to remove this. Um, I'll have to separate it here, and separate it here with a screwdriver. Let's see if I can do that with one hand. And then do this side. Oh, I don't want to damage the plastic. I'm going to shut the cap. Okay, um, so I've removed this top cover here. I removed it from here. Anytime you want to move this steering wheel to help you take off these covers, there's a handle down here. And you just pull down on it and then just take your finger, grab the shaft, and you can move it up and down to help you remove it. So there's I've just drop the bottom cover and the top one's there. So I just leave it loose. The handle is open. Right. So basically what there is is there's a clip 
right here, this silver clip. You just put a screwdriver underneath this clip here. Let me see if I can get a better angle on it. Just put a screwdriver in here and then prop it up and it'll pull that top one away. And then there's uh, two more. Um, you can see one of them is right there. That's the black clip. Just put a screwdriver in behind, then pry it. And, uh, oops, let me get the camera better. Is it right there? Just bend that out and it'll release it from behind the metal part. And then there's another one right there. You can see right here. Whoops, let's get the finger right there. It's usually behind the metal part. Just put a screwdriver right in there, pry a little bit, and then the whole clock, clock spring comes right out. So you just grab it and slowly wiggle it out. Okay. Um, now there's two cables in here, electrical cables. Disconnect this one, connect this one, disconnect this one, this one, and that one. And uh, I'll turn the camera back on once those are disconnected. You can see that one right there. Okay, I've turned the camera back on and I've taken the clock spring out. I just want to show you the three connectors. So this is one connector here, this one here, and this one here. The black one, all you do is just put your uh, your thumb right here on this plastic part here and you'll see it prop up. See like that, let's see if I can get it. And just push on that and then pull it out. The yellow one's a little bit different. You turn it around and you can see there's a lever here. You just move it like that, lift it up, see how it's moving? And that unlocks it. And once you pull up like this, then pull out and then it'll release. This one here is fairly simple as well. You just grab it on the back side. I'll show you right here. You see on the back side, you just press here, right where my thumb is, and then just pull the connector out. Okay, now I'm going to reinstall the uh, new clock spring. I have a brand new one right here. And uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, I just want to show you here. The uh, clock spring has been removed from the steering wheel. But you'll notice that the new one, this is the new one here, it only comes, this is the new one here, it only comes with two plugs, one there and one there. The third one is missing. And what that is, is a steering sensor. So that's the new one, this is the old one. So I've just pulled this off. You can see here, I just pulled it off. And there's only a couple of clips here. That's what the third plug, this, this is the third plug here. You see how this is loose? So it, all you have to do is you just pry up, put your thumb here and then pry up with a little screwdriver right there and then go around this one here and then the one here and then here and then here and then go all the way to the other side. I would disconnect this one too right here. And then what happens is it finally releases and comes off. You can just simply pull this off like this. And that's just a, a steering sensor. So all you do is just take that, throw away the old clock spring and just mount it on top of the new one, like that. And uh, just make sure when you do it, um, you'll see here, there's these little black prongs. I'm gonna make sure they fit inside this blue area here. And then same with this one here. Make sure it fits inside this area here. Make sure it, this blue part won't turn. Um, but uh, this black one will turn. There's a couple of guide pins, one here, one here, and then they'll lock in over here. And all you do is press it together, and uh, I can't do it with one hand, I don't think. It's pretty tough to do with one hand. Oh, there it goes, and there it goes, and clicked in. So you'll see here, um, this part is clicked in right here. And verify that it is locked, yes. This one here is verified it's locked in. This one here is verified and it's locked in. This one here, um, I press it a little bit more to see if it's, uh, no, it's locked in all the way. And then you'll see there's one right here, right there, and there's one right here. And then just make sure they're all locked in. Okay, and now it's ready. You just basically uh, place it like this, invert it, and then it slides. Oops, so I just invert it. You can see there's a third plug now. And all I do is place it like this over top and then reconnect, whoops, reconnect this plug, this plug, and this plug. So this one will go here like that. And this one here, 
I could probably do that right now. Okay, and then I'll just press till you hear the click. And it's clicked. Okay, now I'll do this one here. Press up till it clicks. Okay, and it won't come out. This one's in. And then this one here goes in here. You can see that just goes right in here. Do you hear the click? And then make sure this is on top. And then uh, basically now all I have to do is press it until this little hook here be ends up behind this metal part. And on the top, same thing, this one here ends up locking behind that. And then the other one is this one right here. Oops, let's see the camera straight, this one here, get it behind the metal. So I can, I'm going to do that with the camera off and get two hands on it. Okay, I've got the uh, clock spring back in. And uh, you'll notice the white tab is still here. I don't want to pull that out until after I get the steering wheel in. I put that screw back in, that one, and then this one here and the one back here. Right there. And the one here. Okay. So I'm ready to reinstall the steering wheel. The steering wheel will just basically go on like that. I just got to make sure I pull these cables through. Um, let's pull it through this way here. Like that. And then... Sorry for all the camera wobble. So I pull this cable through. Make sure it goes on the shaft properly. I don't pinch any of the wires. The wires are not pinched at all. Okay. Okay. Pull it through here. Nice and tight like that. And then I just put the, the uh, lock washer back on. Like that. Okay, the nut is on, I just have to torque it. So I'm just gonna go uh, get the torque and then set my torque wrench and then start torquing it. Okay, now I'm going to reconnect the battery. Um, always, uh, when it comes to batteries, remember never allow a wrench to short across it. You'll notice how dirty the pole is. Just use one of these and just clean it off. All right, nice and shiny. And just return the ground. And then just tighten up this nut. And uh, I'll tighten it up with the wrench once I shut off the camera. And then I'll be spraying it with a little bit of red uh, battery paint. And that's it for that.